the month of Thanksgiving, the time that we we recollect the past year's events. And then another month from now, we'll start thinking about the new year and resolutions and goals and dreams. And it's 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 been a tough year for a lot of people and a lot of things. Uh, for myself, I've had to move my shop. I've had to, to do some rehabbing. I had to do a lot of a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things that were very time consuming. And as I looked at that mountain and I said, no way I can get this done. But God made it possible because I trusted in God. Amen. And that was the only way I was able to do it. I remember many times in my life. I remember one time in my life when we were building my house and it was the night after we poured the foundation. The next day I was down in the ditch and I was looking up at that dirt on one side and the foundation on the other side. And I said, there's no way in the world I'm ever going to get this done. But I had to trust God. I had to have God's leadership, God's anointing in my life for anything, even for the physical things of, of building a house. From the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 15 and 16. This is the theme for the month, and it says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Brother Jason this morning talked about the entitlement. This man knew that he wasn't entitled. And I, I remember many times in my life my mother saying to me, Nobody owes you anything. And there was a few expletives in there in the middle of it all. But she'd say, nobody owes you anything. And God doesn't owe us anything. And maybe we feel that we are entitled to some things in life. But the truth is, nobody owes us anything. God has given us all things. God's generosity of his son to die on the cross for us. This man was, was healed of leprosy. And I often think, well, why didn't these other guys come back? Did they think that they were entitled? Why didn't they come back and give him praise? This man knew he was a Samaritan. He wasn't the chosen, one of the chosen ones. But yet he came back and gave God thanks. So this morning, the title for the message is Thanks or No Thanks. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, as we look back at this year, God, and all the things that you have done for us. God, the mountains that we climbed, the God, the, the opportunities to overcome the impossible. God, we want to give you thanks, God, for all you have done. And God, in this time, this, this is a tough time that we live in now, God, with the, the pandemic. And Lord, I just want to thank you for your truth and your spirit that sustains us, God, every day. As we continually give you praise from our mouth, God, it's our focus, God, your son, your spirit, your truth that lives in our life. So bless this sermon today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15, and this is the topic for this week. It says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice, sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving, him, giving thanks to his name. The sacrifice of praise continually. That means when you don't feel like it, or when things don't look good, the surroundings don't look good, the odds are against us, we still give God praise, and we give God thanks. You know, we only have our mouths to give God thanks with. We don't have to go and do those sacrifices anymore. We can call on God any time, any day. Just call on his name. He's always there. His hand is not short. Amen. He can always reach out and help us. Amen. There's a lot of times I'm, I'm on the job and I'm doing a terrible job. A job that is just really like last week. I was soaking wet. It was totally uncomfortable. I had acid going in my eyes and my face. It was burning my skin. And I was just, just terribly miserable. But yet during that time I was giving praises to God. I sang praises to God as much as I could. And that was able to get me through the impossible, the uncomfortable, the unfortunate circumstance that I was in. And it's only because of God's grace in my life. 
that I'm able to do these things, to live for God and to serve Him. Praise is trying to express how highly exalted God is in our lives and how thankful we are for what He has done. Brother Malcolm said last week, God expects to see the fruit that He plants in our life. We praise God for who He is and what He has done. We praise and lift Him high because He is the King of King. He is the Lamb of God. He is the atonement. He is the, the praise sacrifice, the praise offering, the burnt offering, the sacrifice for our sins. He, is, he has given His body as ransom for us because that is something that we could not do. We don't have to go back and do the sacrifices, but God has done it for us. And God is just asking us, offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. The fruit of our lips. From the book of Revelation, chapter 5, and verse 8. And it says, When he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints. They go up in the presence of God. Yes. Sweet smelling savor. From the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. It says, walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And hath given himself for an, us for an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You know, in town here is a place called Hillary's. And a lot of us know well, because when you drive by that place, you smell what they're cooking. And it's awesome. You, you may not be hungry, but you're hungry after you drive by. And to know that my prayers, our prayers, go up before God is a sweet-smelling savor. I remember one, one time a friend of mine, he was, he's from the UP, and he was down in Texas, and he, and he stopped by a roadside stand. And he said, give me an order of that barnyard carp. And the guy said to him, barnyard carp, where are you from? Well, I'm from the UP. He goes, well, down here, that's Texas Eagle because of the smell. Everybody was familiar with the smell of that chicken cooking and how good it was. So they had a name for it. But our prayers and our thanks go up before God in the same way. God is satisfied with our sacrifices of praise. God loves to be praised. He loves to be exalted. And why not? He has done everything for us. He is the perfect sacrifice, the atonement for our sins. And of course, Psalms chapter 34 and verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all time. At all times, his praise shall be continually in my mouth. From the book of Samuel, chapter 30, verse 1 through 6. And we know the, the book of Psalms, a lot of them were written by the King David himself. And this talks about David. David was a man of war. David encountered a lot of things in his life. He, didn't, he wasn't just someone that did nothing. He was about something. You know, I remember my mother, when I would come home beat up, bruised, cut, whatever it may be, my mother would say, well, just sit in a chair all day and you won't get hurt. And I thought about that. Nah, that's no good. <laughs> but David was out doing something, ruling a kingdom. He had work to do. And it's just like us. We have lives to live. And sometimes we, we encounter good and sometimes we encounter evil. But we have to be consciously praising and serving God. Because how else is anybody going to see the love of God within us. Everybody can complain when things are wrong and nobody's going to condemn you for that. But we can give God praise even when things aren't right. That's when people see the testimony of God in our lives. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 through 6. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. 
Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. I've been there. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinaman and Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. How do we encourage ourselves in the Lord? We, David couldn't have given a sacrifice. Everything was gone. There was nothing left. All that David had was his mouth to give praise and honor to God, to pray to God. And with that, we know the story. A lot of us know the story, how they went and they retrieved everything that they lost. Because when you're praising God and thanking God, you're able to hear the direction, the path that God has for you. If you're complaining, you're not going to hear that. You're not going to see that. But if you're praising God, you're going to be listening for that small, still voice. And you're going to follow the directions to be able to go get back what you lost. Brother Jim Bailey is going to come read the story of Job. Chapter 1, verse 8 through 22. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and a upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, Dost Job fear God for not? Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, his substance increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and there came a messenger unto job and said the ox were plowing and the asses feeding beside them and the sapins fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and only i escaped alone to tell thee while he was yet speaking there came another and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and I only am escaped alone to tell thee and while he was yet speaking there came also another and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and only I am escaped alone to tell thee while yet he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in thy eldest house. And before, behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they were dead. And only I escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked come I out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return hither. And the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Thank you, Brother Jim. You notice in that story how fast. Brother Jim, can I have those favors, please? Thank you. How fast everything changed. And I know some of us, all of us maybe, probably, that how things change so fast in our life. How We can be doing so good one minute, and the next minute everything falls apart. You know, almost every morning I, I get up, and I'm having a coffee, and I'm 
planning the day in my head and I'm looking out the window and I'm thinking, well, maybe today I'll have a nice, easy going day. But as soon as I hit the door, 60 miles an hour, there goes the day. Next thing you know, it's eight o'clock at night. I'm dead tired. And I look back upon the day and I said, how did I get through that day? But it's by the grace of God. And I'll always give, acknowledge God and give him yes, the sir. thanks for that. Well, we look at Brother Job here. Did you know that, you know, I, I noticed this and maybe it was something that you've all known and read, but I've noticed this, that God was the one that made the offer to Satan at first. Have you considered my brother Job? Have you considered my brother Daniel, my brother Jim, my brother Bill? Have you considered? He made the offer. And a lot of us, you know, we all want to say, God, I want to be used. God, thank you for all you've done, but I want you to use me. And then when God gives the offer and things happen in our life, we're quick to turn away and, and say, well, what happened? Like Brother Jason, I was entitled. I earned this. How did this all get taken away from me? But if you look at Job, he maintained his integrity throughout it all. He didn't curse God. He, wasn't un he was still just as grateful because he knew that everything around him was just materialistic. From Job chapter 2, verse 3, 3 to 10. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? So he's saying this the second time. That there is none like him on the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God. So twice God offered to Satan Job. And this time, we're going we're gonna to skip down to verse 7. So went Satan be forth, forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to, to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife said unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In this did not Job sin with his lips. So no matter what comes at us in life, we have to give God praise. We want to give God praise. Because when we give God praise, we have direction. Yes, sir. Even if those things are lost, yes, sir. we still have a direction of where to go. We're still in the fight. We're still in the game. We may not look too good. We may look a little bit beat up and scarred, but it's all for the God's, God's will, for God's purpose in, his, in our life. We don't know what that purpose may be. It may be just to be an example to somebody around us. But it's all about God's truth, God's working a work in our life. All things work better for the good to those that love God. Now, we, we're going to read about David again, giving praise to God in Psalms 51, verse 14 through 17. And this was after a huge mistake in his, in his life. This is something that was willful sin, but yet God was still there to reach out and extend grace and mercy to David. He says, deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, contrite heart O God, thou wilt not despise. God's looking for us to turn to him. To, to get our sins washed away. I was baptized in Jesus' name. God changed my life. I remember before I got baptized, waking up in the morning, I felt guilty. Why? I don't even remember what I did the night before. But that guilt was there. And God took all that away from me. Yes, God redeemed me. Amen. You know, a little funny story. Someone yesterday I was working with, and he said, are you coming down today to work? 
And I said, no, I got a, I got a sermon to do at church tomorrow. And he said, you clean up, you actually clean up. Cause everybody's used to seeing me dirty looking like Charlie Brown, uh, Chris, um, what was his name? Pig pen, pig pen always had the cloud of dust around him. <laughs> Though on the outside, you know, we can appear one way, but it's God that makes up the difference. And people see that, that testimony of Jesus Christ in our hearts and our lives. Amen. That that's something it's, it's not, you can't hide it. It it's the city set on the hill. It's, it's the light that shines yes. in our hearts and lives. Yes. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. And this is something that we have to be careful of. It says, For wherefore the Lord said, For as much as the people draw nigh, draw, draw near to me with their mouth and their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. You know, in, in the days that we're living in, there's a lot of excuses for a lot of things that are going on. And as Brother Jay said, a lot of people feel entitled. But the truth is, we have to examine ourselves. I think he also said that also in the sermon, Brother Jay, this morning. We have to examine ourselves. Or that was Brother Malcolm. Sorry about that. We have to examine ourselves to see where we stand every day with God. We have to be in His righteousness, trusting in His blood his offering of his his body the praise of his sacrifice for what he has done for us give him honor with our lips no matter what's going on around us no matter how it appears we have to give god praise so in closing if you're still wandering in the wilderness or if you're still marching around the walls of Jericho waiting for the walls to come down. If you are like Naaman to be cleansed, waiting to be to cleansed and washed, and maybe you don't like the river that God chose for you. Or maybe if you're like when they said, give us Barabbas with a loud voice, they said, give us Barabbas, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. I want the blood of Jesus to be sprinkled upon me to cover my sin, to blot out my transgressions. By him, therefore, let us, by Jesus, by him, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Let us turn back as did the leper, examine ourselves with a loud voice and our lips glorify God fall on our face at his feet, giving him thanks. Remain steadfast and remaining thankful. Amen.